Hey, this is Zach Prowl again with Edina Public Schools, bringing you another eAcademy video. And we're still working with partial quotients on this video, but this time we're dividing by two digit numbers and bigger numbers. So you may remember previously that we worked with single digit numbers and did things like this. So we did two problems to kind of get familiar with it. So now, this is where you're going to see the advantage of using partial quotients instead of your standard drop down method that you can only do one way with. Because remember I said with partial quotients, there are different numbers you can use on the side. As long as you get to the same answer, it's okay if you use different numbers to get to, this, or get to the final answer. So remember I talked about easy numbers, things that are friendly enough for me to plug down here and just chip it away in nice, easy, nice bite-sized pieces instead of trying to wolf down 892. Ooh, big number. Too many groups of 16 for me to figure out on my own. So let's go those friendly numbers. So I started thinking like 100, 116. But wait a minute, 116, that's going to give me 1,600 or 1,600. I don't need to be that big. So let's go you know, nice and easy. Let's go with you know, 10 16. So that's 160. That's going to be a lot of 10s. This is where I encourage you to think of doubles. Double it. Because if you know... 10 16s, 10 times 16 is going to give you 160. Double that because 20 is just going to be double what 10 is. So doubling 16 will give me 32. Bring that zero back there. 320. We're getting closer to this 892. Well, guess what? If you can double 10, why not double 20? Make it nice and easy on you. Try that 40 times 16. Well, double this. So now you're looking at 640, yeah, I'm, I'm getting nice and close to that 892. So, whenever you're doing double digit and you're looking for friendly numbers, start with 10. Double it, that's 20. Well, I didn't try, need to do 30, just doubling with 20 is a nice, easy step. So I got 40. So here are my nice friendly numbers to start working with. Okay. So let's take that 40. 16, remember 40, 16 is worth 640. Track that out. And then I can do 2, 5, and 2. All right, so I've used my 40. I don't need to use 20 16s because that's going to be too much. 320 I don't need. Well, let's start doing the 10s. So 160, throw that in there. Check that off my box. Use it, and now so I do some care in here, and I'm left with 92. Okay, remember how I said thinking in doubles? Well, now you can also try to think in halves. Because if 10 16s gives me 180, well, 5 is just half of that, right? 5 16 is going to give you half, which is 80. Oh, notice some nice, easy numbers to work with here. So... 5, and I'm going to remind you, line up your 1s so that you're not going to make any mistakes at all. Line up those place values of 1s. If I put that 5 over here in the 10 place, you now I might end up making an error or something. So, 5 16s would be the same as 80. Subtract that out. That gives me 12. Can I take any more 16s away? No. And this is the huge benefit of doing partial quotients. I didn't have to go through all this stuff and think 16 times what? Uh, so, five, 55 with a remainder of 12 is your answer. So, give this problem a try. Remember what I said. Trying out with nice, friendly numbers. Am I going to take 100 of them? Am I going to need 1,400? No. Start with 10, 20, 40, doubling each time. Okay, press pause. And let's see if you get what I got. All right, I hope you press pause, okay? So now I'm going to start figuring out where I've got 10, 14. And that's going to give me 140. Now it's going to be kind of low. But let me now try doubling that by doing 20 14s. Well, to double the 14, that's going to give me 28. Just double it in my head. I don't have to figure out what 20 times 14 is. Okay, now i got 40. 14s. Well, if 20 14s is 280, 40 14s is just going to be doubling this answer right here. 
So then that should give me 56. Well, that's going to give me some nice friendly numbers to start working with. So let's start doing 40. Give me 560. Now, subtract that out, starting with my ones place. Ah, because i got to do some uh, carrying here. So then that's 9. And that's 3, 394, 92. Ooh. So I have used my 40. Let's see if I can start using my 20 here. So I'm 280. Track that out. Get the 2, get the 1, get the 1. 112. Can't use that 140. Check this out. Remember what I said about that 5? Thinking in halves now. 5 14s is simply just half of 10 14s. What's half? Of four, half of 140, that's going to be 70. So let's take 5, making sure to line it up in the ones place. That's 70. Track that out. Then the 2. Okay, carry the 1. There we go. And so now I got 42. So this is where I got to start thinking do I want 2 14s, 3 14s, 4 14s? Well, check this out. You got 42. You know 40 14. Well, that's 560. What if I just type that 4? Well, that's 56. Okay, 56 is going to be too big. Well, I know 2 14. That's going to give me 28. Let me try something in the middle. Try 3 14. Okay? 3 14. That will give you 42. Yeah. So now I can add all those partial answers and if you use different numbers here that's okay as long as you got 68 all right so 68 plus or no plus but 68 with no remainders you know that's that's what your answer is so i hope that you uh, are getting a better grasp of what you can do for double digit partial quotients and uh shoot me an email if you'd like to have a little further explanation on something else all right. Have a good night.